Hi everyone and a pleasant good evening to each one of us. We are so delighted that you have chosen to join us for AY Online this month. We want to say welcome to you, our online viewers, and we wish you a very warm and happy Sabbath. We know that this is the first Sabbath in the month of December and we, as regularly scheduled, we have our AY Online program. It's our final installment of AY Online for 2020. And indeed, we wanna give God all the thanks and the praise for seeing us through this year. We have had our fair share of challenges, but God has been faithful. So we are happy to be here with you once again. And we are dealing with the topic tonight, relationships, rejection, and reconciliation. We're gonna talk about breakups, guys a very painful experience that many of us may go through. Before we begin, I want to invite you to bow your heads as we pray to commence tonight's proceedings. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we are so grateful to you for your goodness towards us, your mercies that follow us every day and they are new every morning. Father God, our relationship with you just gets sweeter and sweeter as the day goes by. We thank you, oh God, for this opportunity once again to meet to discuss this very pertinent topic. And we pray, oh God, that you would guide our discussions and our deliberations. Bless our guests, oh God. Bless our online viewers. And we pray, oh God, that those looking on tonight will feel empowered and enriched from the information that is shared this evening. Take complete control of our program, oh God. And may you receive all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise as we seek to serve you faithfully. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So we want to invite you now to repeat our AY aim, motto, and pledge. Okay. So we want to repeat the AY aim first after four, three, four. The AY aim, the Advent message to all the world in my generation. The motto, three, four. The love of Christ compels me. And our pledge presents arms. Three, four, loving the Lord Jesus, I promise to take an active part in the youth ministries of the church, doing all I can to help others and to finish the work of the gospel in all the world. Order out. All right. So as I said to you, I'm your host, Renee Joseph, and it's my privilege to be with you once again for AY Online as we address the topic, Relationships, Rejection, and Reconciliation. I want to invite you to share the link that you've probably just received in your chat. Send it out far and wide because we want as many people as possible logged in to receive the information that we are going to share this evening. And we have two very renowned guests here with us. Now, one of them is a familiar face to AY Online. He's not other than Elder Gideon St. Bryce. And Elder St. Bryce has been a youth leader for more than 20 years. And also he has written extensively on the topic of breakups and, and rejection and reconciliation. He has written for the Caribbean Union. If you purchase his youth book, which is coming out in a few years time, you would also see brief mention being made of maintaining healthy relationships. So that's just a plug in advance, Gideon, for the publishing of your book, all right? <laughs> but we're very, very happy to have Elder Gideon St. Bryce here with us, sharing on his research with us here on how to deal with relationships, rejection, and reconciliation. We also have with us, now you know her in a singing capacity, but this evening she is here as a behavioral specialist. And she's a lecturer at the University of the Southern Caribbean, a professional counselor, a research associate, and a member of the board of directors of the National Commission for Self-Help Limited. So she's a counseling psychologist, and she has specialty as well in educational psychology. So he, she is here to share her expertise this evening with us. And I'm speaking about none other than Dr. Nadine Isaac Dennis. Hi, Nadine, and welcome to you. All right, this is Nadine's Hello. first time with us on 
AY Online. So Nidhi, we're happy to have you to say hi to the folks. Hello, everyone. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. Looking forward to it. <laughs> All right. And, and Gideon, did you, you, did you get an opportunity to smile and wave? Smile and wave as the penguins say. <laughs> Uh, well, I wave, but I and, and smile, but I didn't say anything. But happy to be here. Happy Sabbath, everybody, and yes, thanks for indeed. the invite. Happy Sabbath, indeed. <laughs> so, guys, we're gonna jump right into it. All right. So tonight we are dealing with rejection and reconciliation in relationships. So, my first question to you is: What are some of the current mistakes that people make in uh, executing or terminating? Our relationship. We're also executing, and that sounds a bit too, you know, <laughs> like you're really yeah. butchering it. Okay. But what are some of the current mistakes that persons make in terminating a relationship? Anyone can go first. Ladies well, first. Well, yeah, ladies first. I, I, I think I in order. <laughs> All right, I will just, I will just share about two or three, and then Gideon will jump in. <laughs> um, but I think one of the first things uh, is getting hysterical and violent for some folks. You know, we manage our emotions and handle disappointments differently. And so some persons can, you know, end up getting really emotional because, of course, a, a shock to the emotions. Yes. Um, and then you can end up saying and doing things that you can't take back that are there in history. And then that kind of leads into the next point I have where don't do it on social media. You think that when you delete your post, your post disappears. No, especially when it's something as hot and spicy and dramatic and exciting, folks are going to screenshot, screenshot and share. So you want to, you know, you want to ensure that you're able to manage the emotions related to that and don't try not to put details about your relationship to me in general, personally, um, on social media, avoid, you know, stalking and you know, and, 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 you know, and that kind of behavior. So you want to avoid putting too much of that information out there on social media. And, um, and then I would, I would, the last thing I would add before Gideon joins in is, so I would say, don't beg when you're ending a relationship, don't beg anyone to, don't beg to stay in a relationship with someone who doesn't want to be in a relationship with you. You are fairly, fully, and wonderfully made. If it is, things don't work out. And of course, sometimes it really feels as though it's the end of the world. I've been there, been young, and your heart is broken. But you know what? You know, you will be able to get through eventually. But I, I recommend, remember your worth and your value. You know, don't beg and stay in a situation or in a relationship where you are not wanted and where you are not you valued. Know value. And, you know, where somebody does not, doesn't want you. All right, so that, that's my first three. Um, you'll see that J Gideon jump in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All right, yes, Gideon. Uh, yes, well, I, I agree with, with that, that um, guidance. In terms of some of the don'ts, I, I think uh, you don't want to end a relationship because you're looking for perfection. A, a number of people um, get out of relationships because they would have met with some challenge. They would have met with some some kind of, of incongruence and they are right. looking and they are looking rather than than stay and negotiate it, negotiate through it and build yourself through the the differences that may may apply some people are looking for that perfection that mills and moon mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. scenario and so they get out of relationships because they think the next one will have no problems in it right um, um of course um, there are times where you have to get out of a relationship. That's why we're having this program tonight. But we're saying not every time there is a not, you have to get out. You know? okay. and, and some people treat relationships like that. Then you have the, the um, number, don't get out of a relationship simply based on a reaction. So somebody gets you angry. Anger is a legitimate emotion. Yeah. So people will get you angry. And there are some things that are worth being angry about, mm -hmm. but not every time you become angry or someone does something that gets you angry, you react in a way that you say, I, I don't, I don't, I get, get out of here. You know, that kind of, that kind of thing. So, right. so you, you, don't want, you don't want to end relationships simply based on a reaction or emotional response, mm -hmm. right? And a number of people also get out of relationships because a relationship is a 
a personal thing, but a relationship is not a private thing. By, by Very that time, true. By we that need to time, say that again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So it might again. be personal, but it's not private. Right. And, uh, and, and in the context of getting out of relationships, there are times when you want to get out of it or you're thinking about getting out, but there <laughs> must be that trusted person that you can talk to and say, listen, this is how I'm feeling. This is what I'm thinking. And, mm-hmm. and let somebody outside of the emotion um, be able to give you some guidance, some counsel. Now, after all, the decision will be yours, but, right. but sometimes you get out of, you, 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 you choose some things all by yourself and, and there's no need sometimes for you to carry a burden all by yourself. You can get okay. other people involved that you trust that will give you some good prayerful guidance outside right. of outside the scenario that you are living in. You know, so but those those are the three. Um, they didn't stop that three, so I will stop at three. <laughs> I just, I just, wanted to, just want to throw another one back in there, if you don't mind. I don't want to anticlimax how you ended it so sweet, but um, I just wanted to to just add, you know, to be kind, and that's something as we probably will come revisit as we go along. You know, if it is you're ending a relationship with someone, be respectful. Don't disrespect people. Don't belittle folks when you're ending a relationship. You know, ensure that, and especially we want to make the assumption that we are Christians and we want to be Christ-like. Even if you have to end a relationship, that it's not cruel. All right? So so don't be cruel. Don't, you know, embarrass or humiliate someone if you're going to do do that even though sometimes there are situations when that might have been done to you but you be kind you know and that's i think that's one of the be kind be christ-like and it's not not cliche christ-like because christ was was kind he there were there were times when he chased folks out of the temple that was for that's one setting one particular type of relationship but you want to still ensure that you know that you're not cruel that you that you you know that he ended but you're respectful in, in, in how you do it all right guys so i just had a little technical issue happening there my my computer just shut down um so i'm rebooting mm-hmm. as we speak but <laughs> but yes you know there are certain incidents where um as nadine said make sure we are not unkind because you have instances where um somebody just shows up with a new girlfriend or boyfriend in tow um with with the person you know who they're supposed to be in a relationship being being nearby or being right right there to witness it you know um you have situations where they they're just stop messaging those are some common instances where you're messaging the person and the person just as the term i believe is ghosting right so you know don't be unkind and, and i suppose the golden rule will also apply here do unto others as you would have them do unto you so okay if we just look at the mistakes that people make in, in, in doing breakups or terminating relationships, what then are some of the tips or healthy ways in which they could go about terminating the relationship? So Gideon mentioned earlier, you know, it's not just um, you alone, you know, there is a circle of, uh, of support mm-hmm. that you could probably include and, and, and get advice from in, in seeking to end the relationship. But are there any other tips, good tips for us to end a relationship in a godly way, in a Christian and biblical manner. Can we do that? Is, is, is ending a relationship even biblical? <laughs> what yes, do you think? Uh, All right, lady, go ahead. <laughs> well, ending a relationship is biblical. Oh, yes, it is. Um, <laughs> Lucifer was... Um, so no, he was, he, he did, you know, his, his he, he got, he got, um, you know, he got put out, oh, one a better way of saying it. So, you know, as we look at, you know, tips in terms of how, if, if, you know, how you can end a relationship as a Christian, there are a lot of different points to touch on this, but I just want to just, just share first of all, first to remember that we are living in a sinful world. So you will get hurt. You will get disappointed. And there's something that I had to, you know, I came to have to reckon with. Unfortunately, you will also hurt others. You will make mistakes. You will disappoint right? You will disappoint persons. And so we will get hurt. We will be, be disappointed. But we will have to also remember that whatever we are doing, we must do it to the glory of God. So we right. must remember that we are his representatives. So even when, and you know, like in, re, in 
this is romantic relationships. We're talking about church relationship, friendships, you know, what, however, even if we have conflict, we need to engage the, the power that we have available through the Holy Spirit, you know, and the guidelines of the word to empower how we deal with those things. So the enemy right. wouldn't get a chance to come and overtake God's performance in our life and dance and try to steal all the attention, which is he tries to do all, all the time. All right. Then the next thing is, is um, we talk about ghosting. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that that's another kind of cruel, really cruel way of ending a relationship Correct. that could be devastating for many persons. And it could really, you know, challenge you who you think you are. What did you do? There's no closure and all of these things. And I think some, some persons end, end up doing that because they don't know how to make an exit. They don't have the resource. They don't have, they don't know how to make an exit from a relationship. They don't know how to handle the emotions of the other party. And so it's just, for them, it's easier to just cut it. But in terms of guidelines, I would say, let your yes be yes and your no be no. There are times when you have to, and that, you know, from Matthew 5, 37. And, you know, we, it takes courage it takes courage and strength sometimes to have to confront an issue that is uncomfortable and to have to disappoint someone that you care about. But it would be the kind thing and the, 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 the Christian thing <laughs> to do, to do this in a way, you know, where it is you're sure and you don't, you don't play with people's emotions and you don't, you're not vague about what you want, vague with their expectations. Another thing to throw in, well, Oh, and let me, let me stick to the script. <laughs> because I think sometimes a lot of persons get into relationships and then they haven't really like defined the terms. So I've seen where, and if, even been in situations where you think you're in a relationship, but you but the other person is not in the same place you are in a relationship. So you think you're in a relationship and they're just friends based on how they organize their boundaries. So you want to be able to make sure that you communicate and if it is you are in such a situation, your you yes be yes and your no be no. Um, I will throw in another. Uh, this is number three. <laughs> um, you know, we, you know, if it is you wanna, you gotta break up with someone. We might mention before to be respectful. Don't use impersonal means as far as is possible. Now, with, in these COVID times, some persons might have to get a a, a phone call or a WhatsApp message, but as as, as, long, as, long, as, long, as possible. Do, uh, try, try to make a Zoom call or even a, a, a WhatsApp call, or, you know, a video or something. But as far as possible, try to speak with the person or social distancing protocol. Right. All right. In person, ending a relationship via Twitter or Facebook or via text message, email can be very cruel. All right. And so, and just to add to that, I'm going to slip this one in as, as, as Gideon joins in is to allow the individual, the, the breakup at uh, the other party to, to have a say. It might be difficult to hear what they have to say, especially after you've made your, your mind up based on what you know what you want, you want in the situation. But you don't want to make the breakup a one-way conversation. And that's where that ghosting right. thing comes I think, where you end it and you have the person would have come made their resolve and they disappear into, into space. But the other person doesn't have that closure and they, closure. they don't have that opportunity to say, but what did I do? What, where did I, I don't understand. But just last week, you know, and to give the other party an opportunity to, even if it's to vent or, you know, just make sure you're safe and in a situation, <laughs> you know, because some things could go all right. Yes, correct is right. Give the other person to have their say, to, to, to express themselves, uh, you know, so because you had a lot of time to come to this conclusion, so you want to be able to afford them that opportunity um, to be able to, you might, you might, you know, be able to, I, I, I used to believe that, you know, you have to have that closure and you have to, and sometimes you don't necessarily get it. But if you can allow for, 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 for the person to, to, to have their say and express themselves and so on, especially as it's a shock to them at that point in time, you know, allow for that. All right. And uh, so what like, I'm hearing then, from you, <laughs> what I'm hearing from you, Nadine, is that it's important maybe for the parties to have a conversation. That's a, a conversation. That's, and that's, and that's why I say, you know, to avoid the impersonal means, of course, we are in COVID times, but, you know, so now it's easy to just 
hang up your phone or just right. to, you know, to, to, to end, end the conversation as the case may be. When you're face to face, of course, I mean, you can walk away, but you still want to be able to allow, allow for that where possible, um, you know, where possible. And I would also recommend if it is, you could have like a trusted person nearby or someone to help deal with situations because sometimes emotions could get out of hand and, right. You know, it's just a safeguard yourself to make sure that there's someone around where possible a neutral party, but someone within the vicinity, you know, in case, you know, because some things could, you know, some some things or go goes out. out. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mr. Thurvice, um, any tip? Yeah. Um well for want of um well to, to save the time, I would I would not necessarily go on. An expansion of some of the things that that um, Nadine would have mentioned, but you didn't ask this question. But I want to I want to um, make my contribution on the premise of of uh, this is a relationship that we are ending with somebody that we actually care about, right? right. Because, because sometimes we could be in relationships with people that are simply instruments or tools that we are using, and and therefore all these kinds of principles we're talking about. Would mean they're not, absolutely, they're not applicable would, to they're not applicable at all because some people are just in relationships okay, for, okay. for for the gimme of it, right? right. So we, we, or we for are, the image, huh? For the image, or for, or for the, right? Well, that's part, of the, that's part of the gimme, you know. <laughs> so it, it, have nothing, it have nothing to do with I contributing to your empowerment or your building. This is about what I could get out of being in your presence or part of yes. part of your life. And so we, this is not the kind of relationship we're talking about tonight, right? We're talking about a relationship where you actually um, think um, well of the person. And right. you actually, this is somebody you care genuinely about, but because of some um, perhaps incompatibility um, mm -hmm. that, that may arise and that, that you, you are holding up to, you recognize that okay, this is something that you have to it's end. Not working though. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um. So, when you're ending the relationship, of course, none of us are perfect. So there will be some faults that the person would have exhibited, mm -hmm. as we would have, right? But of course, we don't normally see ours, so we will be able to. What we do not want to do is tell your story of the negativity that may have existed in relationship to other people. That is not. That is not other people's business after the relationship right. has ended, right? Especially on social media. Hmm, I've right. seen well, some. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, you really don't want to do it anywhere, even in a conversation with, with people. You don't want to be right. telling because, because the, the thing is, one of your friends or somebody that you are acquainted with may, may be the next partner of that person, you know? And, and you really don't want to. You really don't want to be um, engaging in those kinds of negative discussions with 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 people who are tarnishing well, I mean, their image. Yeah, those kind of things because this is something you care about. So you want you want to leave the person looking as good and as clean as possible, and that that that's that's what you want to do. Um, you don't want to be. Seeking to continue <laughs> traditions that you and the person may have had. So, if you if you are listening to go to the gym on a Monday, right, and after you would have broken up, you don't want to insist that they keep going on it with it in the gym with you on a Monday because because it, you, you are going to work out partner. Those kinds of things. Um, now, it based on the relationship, it might end up that way, but 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 more than likely. Some traditions or the traditions that you would have built with the person, you would want to discontinue those things. Not you are avoiding them, but you don't want you want to ensure that you do not give cross signals about right. whether or not the relationship is ended or not. You know? So while you might still send a WhatsApp for the person, wish them happy birthday, you don't want to put none of those little huggy huggy emojis in it. Right? <laughs> that kind of thing. Or add any but, darlings, any endearments. <laughs> Those kinds right. of things, right? So you want to make sure that while you're perhaps not avoiding them, but your communication is not contradicting the decision that 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 you would have arrived at. To make them hold on to like a false hope. That's right. That's okay. right. You you also want to 
Um, maybe I should have said this at the top because it sounds very cliche. The fact of the matter is though that prayer is necessary in important decision yes. making. Yes. And while you may not need to pray because God would have already spoken, you perhaps would have been exposed to the guidance that God would have given you through the scripture, through other people, or through the spirit of prophecy and so on. So you perhaps don't need to pray to ask God if you need to end the relationship. You probably know that. But you need to pray and ask God to give you the wisdom and the knowledge as to how to do it properly. Right, okay. and and you, you want you, you don't want to trust your 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 your, your experience and your knowledge and uh, you know you allow God to lead you even into those things because you're gonna treat with somebody's heart, right? So yes. that's something you want yes. to you want to do with. And the heart is a it's something that's fragile and needs to be handled with care. Remember that's, you said that that's in it. a in a <laughs> summit. I think it was. The heart ah. is fragile and needs to be handled with care. Mm -hmm. and, and the last thing I want to say is choose the appropriate time and place. So you may want to, you may have already decided, yes, that this is a relationship I have to end. Um, as Nadine would have given the guidance, you, you want to do it with a, with, with, a, with a conversation as opposed to um, like Donald Trump. You don't want to tweet firing people and those kind of things, right? <laughs> You want to have it with that conversation. Uh, in that conversation, it will include thanking them for how they contributed to your life. Um, okay. Nice. And, nice. And, and let them know that, you know, tell them oh, some of the grown. positives about, about, about them, you know. And so you're ending in a positive, um, leaving the person still hurt, I suspect, but feeling that they would have contributed to your to your. To your um, to your development, and that they have there are things about them that you appreciate, and and you would have articulated that to them. But even in so doing, you want to choose the appropriate place to do that, right? You, you don't want to um, bounce up in the hospital after after. Well, I'm saying speaking from a male perspective, right? So I'm breaking up with a female person, and you, you bounce them up in the hospital because they just came from their mother's um, bedside and so on. To say, hey, by, by the way, we're breaking up. Eh? Um, you, you don't want to have that conversation there, right? <laughs> you don't have that kind of conversation there. Um, all of us um, start with lunch. Or, or between, start, between, yeah, between yeah. our one AY. Yeah. And you are AY leader for the afternoon. Yeah. Or, or Sunday. <laughs> or the Sunday night before they have an exam to take Monday. Those kinds of things. You know, so right. you, want a, you want a time when you do it with an appropriate place and time to have the conversation. Have the conversation, yes, but choose the appropriate place and time. So, so that's me for that. Sir. All right. Thank and you. Now, well, before we go to a break, Nadine, I actually just, have a question for you. So after you make this point, I will, I will ask I will ask you the question. Go ahead and make this point. But yeah, I was just, just to tag back in, um, just remember, remember to be kind. That's just a twist just remember to be good. Remember your responsibility to do good to all Christians and that remember that your ex is... Is a child of God. As much That's as you're right. angry before, and I think that um, Gideon spoke about that before. And I, I've lived long enough to re to live and see where it is. You know, people change. People do. Young people make mistakes and so on. And right. so the person who they rip apart in words and so on, five, ten years later, end up being married to someone you would have never imagined. Yeah. And right. you know, and that story still peddling years later. You know. So and then also to remember that regardless of how painful the breakup is that God is using this experience to make, to allow for you to grow. One of my right. favorite um, quotes is, trials are not enemies of faith, but they are opportunities to prove God's faithfulness towards us. And I'm telling you, from my little break, my broken heart, allowed for me to see Jesus and appreciate mm -hmm. certain things about life and your yeah, Christian growth in ways you wouldn't have seen it if it is your yeah. happy and, you know, all in love all the time. <laughs> so, you know, you know, don't waste, don't ever waste a trial. Right. Don't ever waste an adversity. God has things that he will reveal, ways he will reveal himself to you in those mm -hmm. circumstances that the enemy he would use the situation to try to destroy you. But God always has a way of turning it out for good. Amen. Amen. You know, right. all right. So, you know, Nadine, something you said earlier, I remember um, someone telling me once, um, my life is not going to remain on pause because you're not ready for me to press play. Like, 
big coat. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I honestly was very impressed by the statement. That's why I've never forgotten it. Um, but I, I also found that it was quite abrasive and unkind. So it's very important to, to just be kind and to know that ultimately what you would want for someone to do to you, yeah, you must yeah. do it to others. So the question, Nadine, is hmm. Dr. Isaac Dennis recommended that the breakup should not be via an impersonal means. As much as possible, it should be in person. Is this the recommended way if one is ending an abusive relationship? What do you thank think? you, thank you for 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 asking that question. Whoever asked that question, mm -hmm. thank you, because when I was preparing and I I I, I remember saying I, I, when I begin I would make a disclaimer that I forgot to make. <laughs> that a lot of what we are sharing here would not necessarily be in the context of ab abusive relationships. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, whereas I, I, I think there's a kind of zero tolerance where those things are concerned. And if it is you are in a, um, a, an abusive, abusive. A man, and not only just physically abusive, you know, uh, yeah. manipulative um, relationship. And you know that when you get into that person's presence, they will be able to manipulate you in a way that by the time you have all your words, you plan your speech. But by the time that person says two sentences, you forget everything and you're back where you started. I wouldn't necessarily recommend recommend that approach for those toxic, abusive situations. Yeah, they could get right? a letter. Yes, they could get they could get a, a letter, or you know, or even and, and in some cases, indeed, to be ghosted because your life actually yeah. um, might be you know by be at stake. At so risk, those right. those methods, they, we what we're looking at here would be in the context of. Um, persons who are health respond, um, you know, functioning at a kind of more healthy um, level, but okay. in toxic, dangerous, uh, abusive situations, um, that in-person thing, um, I would not be recommended. Avoid it. Okay. Thank you so much for bringing that in. I don't know if you have anything to add to that, Gideon, but you know. No, that, that, that's fine. That, that, yeah, that, that, yes, that, yes, that's fine. Yes, you will yes. tolerate yes. 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 sure that you are not alone. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you so much. All right, so we want to invite our viewers. Um, I think that question was from Daryl Waldron. We want to invite our viewers to ask your questions. You would see the live chat on the bottom of the YouTube stream. So please feel free to ask your questions to Dr. Nadine Isaac Dennis or Elder Gideon Simbrice. We'll be very happy to respond to you. We're going to take a quick break right now. As you know, this is our final AY online installment for 2020. And so we have just one or two testimonials about what AY online means to me. So here's our first testimonial from one of our faithful viewers. And I'll invite Robert now to take over to play that video for you. As we take a short break, we'll be right back. Good day, everyone. I am Samuel Martin. And AY online means a lot to me because it has dealt with controversial issues that are faced by the youths in the church. I am grateful for the leaders of the South Caribbean Conference for taking the initiative to launch an EY online that can reach others and finish the work of the gospel. Thank you. All right. So thank you, Samuel, for sharing about um, EY online. We are very, very happy uh, to bring you this program month after month. And as, as by God's grace, we'll continue into 2021 so thank you and i'm very happy to have had a young man you know share his expression on on what we share the programs that we put together here on ey online so thank you samuel and we hope that you're watching tonight and that you've invited your friends to watch along as well all right next question guys okay so can you offer some tips to the person who has broken up who has been broken up with all right can you offer some tips to that person um, on coping with the breakup in its aftermath. You know, some people um, become depressed, some people withdraw, some people stop going to church, you know. So can you share with them um, some healthy ways of coping in the aftermath of a breakup? All right. Um, so I will respond by saying, first of all, to acknowledge your hurt, your disappointment, acknowledge your emotions. It is tough. You know, be real about that. Um, so acknowledge, acknowledge it, and get help and support. 
you, we, you don't have to walk this path alone. And of course, you know, some people might give you some features. You're not the first one, you're not, but, and you're, you're not the first, and you ain't gonna be the last. It's not plenty fish on the sea, and if it, fish on the sea, get over it now. That it's ugly man that you, that ugly, ugly man that you crying so much about, da, 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 and whatnot, all right? But you need to acknowledge that it hurts. And I won't go into the neurological part, but you know, pain and loss, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a neurological, and there's a neurological response, that natural, you know, response, you know, the, the dopamine and oxytocin high, those neurotransmitters that make you feel so love, you know, those love hormones that make you feel so nice and warm. When that is taken away from you, that's almost like a response to, like, you know, a withdrawal from cocaine, the research. Biological, yes, yeah, okay. So there is that type of research, so it's real. So get the support that you need. Um, and when I say get the support that you need, we want to make sure, of course, we, we don't believe in um, using substances to, 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 to influence our emotions. However, there are some healthy substances that you can use, such as um, endorphins to exercise, getting physical and exploring um, new activities, you know, so, you know, acknowledge your hurt, um, get support and counsel and get, I mean, good friends, friends, people who will give you wise counsel. If you have two or three senior mothers of Israel in your corner, I love, I love my seniors. I love, I have my, I have my girlfriends, but I love my senior ladies. You know, go and you know, cry and let them hold you and 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 you know, support you and pray you through. You know, but you do, yeah. don't go, don't go, don't go it alone. Do do not go jump into another relationship immediately. Okay. That 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 you know that high of falling in love and feeling good and someone feeling you know. That, that's a beautiful feeling. And those, those neurotransmitters I spoke of, about before, you know, that release is good and actually could feel good to, when you, you know, you're just lost. But that, re, but that doesn't help you to really deal with the loss. So really yeah, deal with the loss too. and don't jump into another relationship because sometimes, you know, you don't make the best decisions right. and you might end up in the same same place you were at before and then uh, before i uh, make way for gideon again um you know take this time to work on yourself develop mm -hmm. yourself physically emotionally you know academically educationally you know take this time to allow yourself to grow as an individual you know allow yourself to you know to grow explore who you are and use the opportunity for personal growth i've observed some things over the years and experience some things over the years. And I think a lot of times people don't take the time, you know, where everybody has this pressure to be coupled up, all yeah. right? So that you don't want to be single for too long. And I think that we need to encourage people that the aim of, and this is a pet peeve of mine for single, for some single ministry approaches, right? Where the whole aim is to unsingle people. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but, you know, I think the aim should be to allow for persons to, to work on being whole become whole right, in right. christ allow Amen. yourself maybe all right gideon i think she got frozen there, got um, there. yeah yes yeah, so go ahead <laughs> okay so I'll, I'll fill in them until she comes back in yes <laughs> yeah so um spiritual good Julie, please, please, with this with okay. this period okay. is wonderful Oh, I was giving some trouble. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and so flows, flows, We're having a lot of technical giving me a little kind of tonight, but the blood yeah. of Jesus. <laughs> having, me rap, having me rapping or something like that. Bit there. You must have a little bit there. <laughs> but we, we, we heard like that you should be whole. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, you said? Yes, go ahead, Gideon. Yes, okay. Yeah, well, I, I just yes, want to... Um, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, let, let me just re-emphasize some of the things that Nat Nadine would have said. One, you, you really want to live with grace. So you, you are the person that, that is being um, declined. You, you want to... is our, is our word in our topic tonight. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, you want to live with grace. Right? Right. Now, I want to say, now that if, if somebody is, is, is rejecting you, you... There's nothing intrinsically wrong with you asking a question, right? You're in a relationship, the person is ending it, asking a question, there's nothing intrinsically wrong with it. But do not, do not make yourself a beggar, right? Do not make yourself a beggar. 
right? Um, and you don't want to come across as a sour loser either, okay. right? So, so you may ask a question, but you don't want to be a sour loser. You don't want to be a beggar. Um, the person is making their choice. And if you want to clarify that, ask a question, but, right. but leave with grace. Okay. Do not, do not make wild promises. I think Nadine would have said that at the top of the um, program. Do not make my, oh, I will do this. I will do that. I wouldn't do this no more. I, I will change. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I will, yeah. Do not go about making those wild promises. You, you may do some introspection. And, and if the person um, did the, the rejection well enough and they had a conversation, then they perhaps would have pointed out some, 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 some um, negativity. And perhaps you'll want to consider that and work on it. But do not make no promises about changing mm -hmm. um, to maintain the relationship. Make that promise to yourself if you think there is worth in what the person is saying and um, thing. Don't be afraid to be sad. There are sadness is not, is not weakness. Sadness is the result of, of loss. And if there is loss, then don't be afraid to be sad. Of course, um, doctor will tell you how to treat with, with sadness and how to go through the grief process and so on and to, and to do that in a, in a healthy way in a recommended way, but really and truly, um, don't be afraid to be sad. There's, sadness is not sinfulness, it's not weakness, right? right? Um, and as, as Nadine said, you don't want to jump in a next relationship as soon as, as you would have gotten out of one. That is, that is problematic. Stay active. Okay. Keep living, right? Now, that might be a little easier to say than do, but it is necessary. <laughs> right stay living stay active um if you're going to school go to school you say go to the gym go to your gym you say go by the beach every sunday go by the beach on sunday do what you have to do keep living keep living right don't don't damn thing and of course as i said all things may be religious but all things may not be religious but all things are spiritual keep praying yeah. right discouragement is the anesthetic the devil used before he rips your heart out do not Ooh, allow yourself. Do not allow yourself. You need to say them with <laughs> emphasis. Oh, oh, okay. I'll say anesthetic. Um, discouragement is the anesthetic the devil uses before he rips your heart out. Mm -hmm. You do not want to allow yourself to become discouraged. Right? Disappointed, yes. Hurt, yes. Sad, yes. Not discouraged. Keep praying. Keep trusting God. Keep your confidence in God's power and his wisdom. All right, so, so I'll stop there. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. I mean, I think those were some great tips, you know, um, for, uh, seek, seeking. Um, um, Nadine is saying, don't let yourself be isolated. All right, so continue to be active, as, as, as Elder Gideon said. And if you have to, seek help, you know. Um, that's, a, okay. that, that's not a sign of weakness, seeking help to cope. Thank you all so very much. I trust that someone is, who is listening would be empowered um, by what we have shared. Um, I have another question. Uh, the question is, how do you know when it is time to end the relationship? If it has become necessary to end the relationship, how would you know? All right, well, Gideon, we did, okay, go ahead, you go ahead, Gideon. Go, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Look like you're ready to draw, go ahead. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I would say, okay, I would say just to just a tap back on um, the, we were just talking about the abuse situation. If you're in a relationship and you realize that you are and you are sad all the time or, or you feel as if somebody is putting you down all the time and, and so you need to, too. you need to, uh, right, so you need to evaluate some of those, those things and remember your worth so that, you know, you know how how do you know when it's time when it's time to break up? There are sometimes some obvious signs that you should break up with someone who who mm -hmm. it doesn't violate your boundaries, who disrespects you, uh, and and things like that. And then you're waiting and you're praying for a sign. <laughs> and then sometimes we spiritualize. We try to over spiritualize 
Um, and as and then and spiritual and religious abuse is another thing. There's a whole topic by itself, Renee. Okay. But, okay. Um, but sometimes people could kind of kind of re- weaponize their spirituality or your spirituality in mm-hmm. in these situations. Yes. You know. So you know when do you need to when when to know what it, when it's time to, to to end a relationship? I think you when when you realize that this relationship has become more of a burden. To you than a blessing i could i could i think so and, I, and I, I spiritually as well primarily spiritually emotionally because and just and just and, and i just want to throw in a little something here again you know having been uh somebody was single for, for for a while for a minute and you know everybody always making recommendations or making comments you know there's a lot of pressure there's a lot of pressure for single people to be unsingle and sometimes people negotiate and you know, I remember, and I wouldn't say this one, but you know that I, people might want to tell you things like, you know, make you feel as though, well, this is your last option. Right. And so you're so holding on to a situation is rejecting you. You are obviously right. unhappy, but you're seeing, you're seeing the, 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 you're seeing a wedding. You see, okay, the possibility of having that big moment. But it is obvious that you're unhappy. It's obvious that you are not doing well and you're not prospering and so on. So, you know, I think when, when you, and you know, when those things happen, it's time, it's, it's time, time to end it. And, and also to end it takes strength and sometimes you may need some support as well. So mm-hmm. that's where I drop my full stop for now and let Gideon, yes. um, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, please. I, yes. I, I'll probably go quickly three or four things, right? Um, let me say the, the first thing is, is what you consider red flags. You, you really, mm-hmm. if you have if you're having frequent arguments, if, if, now, people that disagree, people have argument. But if you're arguing every day, three, four, five times a day, every time you meet is an argument and you always have to be making up, um, forget that fallacy about making up is the best part. Forget that nonsense. If you, mm-hmm. are, if you are arguing frequently, something is wrong with that, red flag. You probably need to end that relationship. If, mm-hmm. if you have, um, well, prolonged feuds. So, red flag. so if it is that you... You're probably not arguing frequently, but when you do argue, this thing must be a week long. No, a week long. You have no communication. That that is that is probably not the person that you want to be spending your life. Can you with. imagine being right. in a home with that person? <laughs> that that, that, kind, of, that right. kind of thing, mm-hmm. right? Um, then there is what is called incompatible goals. The person may be maybe a good person, just like the fruit that Eve saw. It was good to eat, but but um, to look at. But, but no. look at so incompatible goals. Let me give you an example. If it is that you bounce up this, this um, well, from my perspective, I bounce up this this really healthy looking lady, you know, nice, beautiful Christian young lady. The thing is, however, um, I am planning to to live here in Trinidad because my family business expect me to stay here and manage this business and so on. So I plan to work here. She has to go back home because of um, some commitments that you have there. Now, that's an incompatible goal, right? You, you, you can't plan a relationship, to maintain a relationship where you have to live here and she have to live somewhere else, right? right. So, so I'm just drawing that as a simple example. There are some, <laughs> some goals that are, that are just incompatible and you you know it would not work out, right? You you also if he well, wants you to be a housewife, but you want to be a career woman, right? Children. <laughs> Maybe I saw your eyebrow there. You, you you plan to have you 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 do not want to have children for whatever fear you have, but this person know that they want to have five children. Oh well, you know, as nice as the person is, you're looking for problems, right? So there there are some and. In- some goals that are just incompatible and you have to when you when you meet them and you recognize that they're inre- irreconcilable then mm-hmm. that's probably a good reason for it to <laughs> um, end the relationship and abuse well we spoke about that mm, done, non-negotiable. done that non-negotiable right you're done with that distance distance is something now there are some relationships that could survive distance and a lot of that has to do with how mature the relationship was before the distance occurred okay Right, but distance um, relationships are built based on understanding and, and learning of each other. If your relationship is very young, and but this person and you, but you have to be very distant from each other, it's probably best you don't pursue that relationship because you you at cannot. Regret, yeah, you don't have the time 
to get to know each other really if, if the distance cannot be, um, that distance cannot be solved, right? So I know we'll have stories of people who say, well, we survived that and so on. I'm giving general guidelines that, 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 will, that will generally make sense for most right. people, right? Mm -hmm. um, then there's disinterest. Mm -hmm. If the person don't take you on, <laughs> go fight it, go fight it. Fight it. Come out of the relationship. So I, I will end there. <laughs> and right. I, just wanna, I just wanted to just, just tap, uh, forgive me, I keep on tapping back when Gideon, uh -huh. Gideon keep on inspiring <laughs> me. But when we talk about incompatible goals, right? And I, I know of, we, we believe in the power of prayer. And it's not to diminish the power of prayer at all. And there have been times when persons' minds will change and situations change. But we need to be, be careful about being presumptuous, yeah. about getting into certain circumstances, where you say, I'm going to pray it out. I'm going to pray for this thing to change or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And you met a situation like that, things continue on like that and then when things continue on you are amazed and you know you it's prayer and fasting and so on of course those things are, it's possible to change but you need to be very realistic about these incompatible um goals and so on that as, as Gideon had um highlighted and then just the thing um the tag back on the the abuse the abuse, um, I guess that's a whole other program by itself, um, Ren, so I would just leave that <laughs> alone for now. But because, you know, abuse, it shows up in so many different it's ways. Different yeah. and, and, it's, and it's very prevalent among us, among our young people. We put our heads in the sand about a lot of things, a lot, about, a lot, of, a lot of signs, but it is prevalent. And I guess that's something that you could address even more. I don't want to get distracted on a soapbox here about, about that now, so... No but problem. Thank you so much. Serious to, to consider, yeah. All right. We have some questions um, for you to respond to um, as okay. we begin to wind down. Uh, I see. Well, let me address the question from Robin Bob. There's a question. Is this just about boyfriend or girlfriends or is it also for married couples? Um, primarily, I could say that it was directed to the boyfriend, girlfriend, boyfriend termination girlfriend, of the yeah. relationship. Um, but there is, of course, some of the information that would be shared that is also applicable to married couples. For example, the whole issue of abuse, right? Um, and of course, if, if it is that the person is disinterested and, and not communicating, probably showing attention elsewhere, etc., then, you know, that would also apply to the marriage relationship and you know, therefore, when you will have to walk away, all right? Um, and I, I think it was mentioned a bit earlier that you may also have to seek counseling. As, as a couple, you know, you, there are people in Israel that you can go to for some sort of advice and counsel on how to treat with the situation. So I think, um, Robin, it's primarily boyfriend and girlfriend, but where yeah. the information could be applied to marriage as well, we trust that you would be able to benefit um, from it and also apply it and share it. All right. But um, there's a question as well from Crystal Gittens. Um, well, the day I think that the panel acknowledged that a breakup is a loss and many people have to go through the stages of grief. I, I think we mentioned that it's a loss. I don't think we actually mentioned the stages of grief, but I heard you all say, take time to, you know, deal with your emotions, get help if you have to, pray. Uh, well, um, we, just we, you can reiterate. Yeah. Um, just we, did say the, we did say the doctor would tell them about the grief stages and so on. We didn't all go right, through it, a, but, but we did say that. <laughs> That there will be grief stages to go through. You know, through. well, no, yeah. of course, the, 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 <laughs> the, it, 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 it is important to highlight that you know our, our relationship loss is is also a, you know even you know on a, a level of grief. In fact, you said that um, loss in a relationship, the pain that you feel um, in 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 a really the loss of a relationship can be compared to the physical pain. It registers almost the same when they did um, neurological. Um, examinations or even scans to the same as, as as you know a pain in your leg or losing a limb and so on it is excruciating so that loss is you you do um you do experience um grief and loss in a similar manner in a similar manner right um of course the stages of grief is often is is widely used as a as a model as a framework to be able to understand 
grief or one of the one of the critiques of the stages of grief is that it doesn't necessarily go that way for everybody. It's order. It, it doesn't necessarily follow that particular order um, always. But it is important to acknowledge though that those stages they do occur and it, that the grief of a loss of a relationship is significant. It is real. And so while we while we might sit around and say, well, you know, why why you get over get over her? It's a more fish in the sea or whatever. It is right. real. It's a it's a significant loss. Remember your neural pathways and your whole framework, your, your, your mind has started to condition to this particular person in, in this way. And so the loss of the relationship now is a that there's a certain level of devastation to your system, to your mind, yeah. to your emotions, your habits, and so on. Exactly. You know, so it is um it is comparable. Um, however, just similar to how you are able to cope and find ways to move on where grief is concerned, um, you can also you can also be able to, to you know, recover and, and move on. While it, they might not as quite be the same, depending on the relationship, the nature of the relationship and so on. Um, because, you know, losing a loved one who is gone forever and ever, amen, as compared to uh, a loss of a relationship, it's similar, but, but not, of course, not the same. So you, but yeah, but you would consider um, those things, yeah. All right. Um, all right, so Nadine, you actually have just pretty much transitioned like, into our next segment of the program. So uh, Krista, why we didn't use the terminology um, denial and anger, and what's the third one? I think bargaining, mm -hmm. um, and then depression, and then acceptance. Mm -hmm. Why we may not have used um, those terminologies, um, but I think what we would have described certainly would cover that. And we definitely, I did hear, both of our panelists emphasize very strongly there should be no bargaining as in I will change and making wild promises, etc. All right, but you move through the, it, the phases of grief in a healthy manner um, towards acceptance. And, and, and you know, as, as Nadi would have highlighted, identifying how the relationship will have contributed to your growth and development. So I trust that we've answered your question, Crystal. Um, before we go to our next break. So let me find out, can parties who have terminated a relationship remain friends? You know, we're moving into reconciliation now. You know, can we remain friends? Do we have to come apart for a while or do I have to pass them straight? Is there a, a time when, you know, we know for sure there's, there can be no reconciliation. We just can't be friends anymore. I, I believe but, that you could, you could, um, you, you can be friends, but you have to understand. I think first of all, you need to not, to be able to allow for your mind and your body and everything else to adapt to the fact that this is done, right. there needs to be a period of separation or okay. a change in certain relationship dynamics. Doesn't mean that you have to pass the person straight in the road if you see them or if you see them in church, you know, you don't tell them happy Sabbath or, you know, you, 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 and all of that. However, I think that there needs to be, um, there needs to be a, a, a certain type of separation or change in the relationship dynamic. In terms of a friendship, as to what a friendship would look like um, moving forward, that would depend on, depend on the individuals and what they want to accomplish. So for example, if it is the person moves on, they, they, they end the relationship, and then that person ends up um, in another relationship, there need to be boundaries. You need, well, you need to establish the kind of boundaries. Do How much access are you going to allow them to have? So for example, you know, there's some persons who might end a relationship or say they end a relationship, but the only thing that they have done to end the relationship is to say they have ended, ended the relationship. Mm -hmm. Everything else is operating the same way. However, even though they said the relationship, they ended the relationship, the other party has moved on, but still enjoying the benefits of the, the relationship that they had before in the name of friendship. And that's where things get complicated. Things get, um, can sometimes get, you know, really convoluted and, and that's why you're talking about let your yay be yay and your nay be nay be clear about boundaries be clear about boundaries have difficult conversations where necessary and be very clear so for example you, you're at your as a young man young woman declare your intentions or even declare your expectations right. be clear about it and so if it is it's not it's not matching up you know, you do take the necessary action and respect yourself. So you don't end up in a situation where, you know, you call and you say, okay, you're showing up to the particular event and thinking, okay, they are not there by themselves and you're thinking that you all will hang out as usual. And when they show up with their, with their new friend, 
you upset and you and 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 you know and it's a whole feeling. Of, and and those and feelings right so you know i think it's and people need to negotiate what the friendship looks like right but be respectful i have personal i had a personal um theory over the years in terms of when my especially my male friends get married or my male friends they they move on and so on or, or there is a relationship that ends you respect that next person who person. is on the scene and so, and so on and set clear boundaries. Boundaries are good for you, and boundaries are good for me. <laughs> they are allow good. us boundaries are good allow to for <laughs> us to be clear and to know exactly where we stand and to avoid challenges that the enemy, because the enemy, he's a willy for he's looking for drama all over the place. And uh -huh. so to you would not be available for that type Amen. of drama. Amen. All right, so I, I, I let me let me drop that first up again and let Gideon yes. um, <laughs> do what he does. So, yes. a lot, so, so, so a lot of a, a lot of the the um, guidance with respect to whether you remain friends will have to be based on what is your interpretation Ooh. of friendship. Let's define right? those terms. Yeah, what, uh, define that's why I define that. What what do you mean by friendship? So. I am thinking that this is somebody that you that you had feelings for. This is somebody that you 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 loved, um, or would have loved you, and but so I am thinking by and large, mm -hmm. if this relationship really was a proper relationship, but for some reason you now have to end the relationship, love doesn't disappear. What you mm -hmm. are now what you are now dealing with is commitment. So I still mm. have feelings for the person, but I am now diminishing and taking away my commitment to the relationship, mm -hmm. right? And of course, over time, in the absence of that commitment, what it does is provide space for, for growth, for love for someone else by mm -hmm. either party and a diminishing of the expression of the love towards the person, right? Right? And so when you, when, when you treat it like that, you are therefore, this person is not your enemy. This person has not become your enemy. So you are still desiring the best for this person, yeah. right? Now, part of that expression has to be understanding as they didn't say what your boundary is now with them because part of, part of you wishing the best for them means that there are some things you cannot do with them and you can't you and some things clear, that you can't make do. it clear that's, make that's it right clear, make you know it, it, it is in their best interest that you withdraw to some degree Correct, but the, right. the withdrawal is not about you disliking the person or, or you liking them any less or, or caring any less is you are you are allowing the space for their best interest to, to develop right yes. Um, so, so as I said, what, what you define as friendship is important. And to right. me, that's what friendship is. Friendship is about wanting the best for the individual and doing what is, what is within your realm for that best to, to, to happen. So, so for me, I'll say, yes, you should remain friends. You well, you can. you can. You can. You, well, you, well, you can because again, there are some scenarios where you already um, you need to withdraw. For have to while, absent like yourself, me. right? Absent yourself, and and maybe have them absent them themselves, right? I'm very happy that you would have emphasized um, boundaries um, because sometimes you end up uh, trying to preserve the friendship, but the interactions there's, there's still the touching. There's still a certain degree of intimacy yeah. that is maintained that does not necessarily um, augur well for separation and, and moving right. on. And I'm asking that because we have a question. My girlfriend and I mutually ended our relationship a while ago. We decided to just be friends. Neither of us have moved on as yet, so we hang out sometimes. But many times when we meet up, we end up being physical and the person has it in inverted commas. All right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to lose her as my friend. So how do I deal with this? And how, well, I think that should be do. How do I go on to find a new girlfriend? So I want you all to think on this. We're going to take a break because as you know, our next segment deals with um, 
how should the party in a terminated relationship respond to the entry of a new partner by the other person? All right. Yeah, so I think this kind of ties into that dealing, yeah. dealing with the boundaries, severing boundaries fully and moving on into a new relationship and not having issues with your old partner and that kind of stuff. Um, the old partner watching the new girlfriend cut eye, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So we're gonna pause here uh, for another what AY means to me segment. And this one is coming from the Fadham district. So Robert, take it away. We'll be right back. Hi, good evening. I'm Tova from Maloney Seventh the Adventist Church, and I would like to say that AY Online has really been informative, but not just informative, but I love the way that they break things down, really for the younger persons to feel that it's palatable and it's relevant and it's not over their heads. So I really want to compliment um, AY Online for this series and i hope that it continues in the future um so especially now in the time of pandemic so that we can all continue to benefit in a spirit for a relevant way that's very important to young people making things relevant and i think ay online has certainly done that happy sabbath all right. Thank you very much, Tovalin, um, for your contribution this evening. We're very, very happy that you are benefiting from what we share here and that you think it's relevant. <laughs> I would hope so, um, because we want our young people to be inspired, empowered, um, to share, you know, to be enriched by what we share and to also, you know, share it with their peers. Because a lot, we, one of the things I am proud about being a Seventh day Adventist is that um, we have a lot of information. Uh, we have a wealth of information that we can tap into to live really empowered lives and, and to share, to inspire others. So Tova, thank you very much and continue to encourage your young people to be a part of AY Online and, you know, feel free to recommend topics. If, if there's a particular topic that you would like for AY Online to address, um, feel free to drop us an email, sccayonline at gmail.com. That email address again, sccayonline at gmail.com. And as we know, all our programs remain online and on YouTube at the SCCAY online page. So if you just look SCCAY online, you'll see all of the programs that we've had for the past 18 months. Huh? For the past 18 months, they are online. And so you could always forward the link to your peers who may be interested um, in one of the topics that we have explored. And of course, we want to encourage you all to subscribe to the channel as well. Subscribe so that when new material goes up, you will be notified and you can have direct access to it. All right, guys. So the question that we ended on, my girlfriend and I, we decided to break up and we decided to remain friends. We still hang out because none of us have moved on. Um, but when we, many times when we meet up, we get physical. You know, how, how do I deal with this and what would happen um, if I decide to go on to get a new girlfriend? So let's talk about entrance of a new party. Um, to the, well, the broken up parties. How, how do we deal with that, guys? And respond to the question that we just received. All right. Gideon is always letting you well, go first, Nadine. I, <laughs> yes, I was, just, I, was just, I was just about to say, I was just about to say, Gideon, you go. I will. Uh, uh, not a problem. All right. I'll let you guys go ahead. <laughs> Okay. Well, I I um I really think that the young man need to reconsider his status. When I say reconsider, reevaluate maybe, reevaluate his status. Mm. So he's saying they would have broken up. Um, if they are still well dating, basically. So you are you are dating the person that you broke up with, basically. Um, so I, I think you need to reevaluate that. Um, okay. So to be honest, if you are having challenges in terms of becoming physical, in spite of the um, thing, have a, a conversation. Are we really um, desiring to end this relationship, mm -hmm. right? If, if you think that the, 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 
the decision perhaps was premature and so on, and you all want to reestablish that relationship, then do that. But if it is the decision is you have broken up, then if you understand that when you take certain actions, unwanted consequences is desired, then there's only one thing to do, stop taking that action, <laughs> right? So it, it's, again, a number of things are easier to say than do, but, mm -hmm. but that is what you have to do, right? And I, I challenge with that a lot of people have, inclusive, of course, seminar vendors, young people, and adults too, is we try to, we try to stop doing things by extracting it as, as opposed to displacing it. And all right, all right. The, the fact of the matter is you don't just, if you check Psalm, Psalm 119 verse 13 that says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The result is I would not sin. But the action is thy word have I hid. Mm -hmm. So the hiding of the word displaces the, 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 um, the desire to sin. Mm -hmm. So a number of us try to work with it backward. We try to stop the desire of sinning and then think that we will develop a taste for the word. So I'm simply saying to the young man, find something else to do. Well, this place that you don't want to do with something that is, that is empowering and building and so on, right? You have to build a new pattern. Again, the doctor will tell you about those um, um, synapses and the electrical wire through the, um, through the brain that will develop patterns and all these kinds of things. I'm not right. into all of that. I'm simply saying that Practice makes improvement. And that is, if you practice the wrong thing long enough, you become good at doing the wrong thing, right? right? So just avoid the wrong thing. And the way to avoid the wrong thing is to start finding a right thing to do. Right. All Displace right. It. Dr. Uh, Isaac, anything to add to that? I saw you clicking your back. I know I was clicking my <laughs> fingers here as well. <laughs> I mean... You know, when just to just attach, attach the, you know, the part of the practical side of, the, well, to respond to the question <laughs> about, you know, how a party to a terminated relationship should respond on the entry of a new person coming into the picture, okay? Um, I, again, I will always come to, first of all, acknowledge and be honest with yourself about how you feel. All right? Don't deny and say, you know, I, I don't care. I don't care. And, and, and then your emotions bubble over in another situation. So one of the ways of managing your emotions, first of all, is to acknowledge it and to realize if this is natural, this is part of the process and, it, and it's actually okay. All right? So when just seeing that new, you might have been good, you all have been, you and your, your, the person, your, your, your ex broke up and you're seeing each other and you're all friendly and peaceful and all of us and all of that. And then one AY, somebody come, a visitor came with him. And sit down in the place where you used to sit down. Problem. And all of a sudden, <laughs> you start to feel, you start to feel some adrenaline, you start to feel some adrenaline and cortisol starting to pump through your veins. You start to feel a, a, an easiness. All the time you were good and you say, but I'm over, I'm over this. But then now you start to feel a particular way. All right? Be, be honest with yourself about it. You know, if you do have a trusted friend that you could talk to about it, or even if it is you want to get therapy or counsel or something like that, it's good. Talk that, acknowledge that this is real, this is what it is, and don't allow the, the mystery of it to kind of overwhelm you. And then, next thing in a situation, you have to run out and say and cry or some other. Oh, just be, yeah. real, be real with it, you know, be honest about that, get the support and comfort, console yourself. And, and you might have to even start grieving the loss of it, the loss again in a new way. All right. Um, but then you can also, um, you know, try to switch a negative response by, by, you know, saying, I think one of the ways that, you know, God helps for us to override sometimes negative emotions towards individuals and certain circumstances by praying. And so like, for example, with your enemies, you want to get over somebody, somebody you, you kind of dislike or whatever, start praying for them. 
start praying for them, start praying that God bless them. And when God's to bless your enemies, it's about you. you know? That is a wonderful way and a place and space to be able to address the, address that. So, you know, you know, um, wish him, wish them well. And at first it might mean it. You might, it mightn't be from a genuine place, but you know, continue trying, yeah. you know, you'll get there. Pray about you that know. too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I you know, say, you know, and, and go to be honest with God. I said, God, I saw what I saw today, and I'm upset, I'm hurt. This is where I am at, and this is how I feel. I'm angry. But God, you say, I'll be angry and say not. Help me, Lord. You know, and and you know, go, and you know, you, you talk through and you be real about it and you go through. Um, you know, so being honest about that and even acknowledging it, and then you know, reframing how you see that. You say, okay, well, he is moving on. Or she is moving on and you know wish them well it's easier said than that i know i know i get that all right but it's worth a try also i would i would also advise avoid getting into confrontations yeah all right mm -hmm. excuse me sometimes you know depending on and situations can be complicated suppose it's somebody that you knew suppose it's a friend of yours mm -hmm. Right? Betrayal. So something you <laughs> So and, and and then again, but then I have I've grown and look. What is betrayal though? You know, because he's single, he's not married. <laughs> you, you break the girl code and the guy code. <laughs> well, well, who where's the girl code code handbook? <laughs> right? So you know, um, so don't get don't get into confrontation or situations. And don't force yourself to be put in un uncomfortable situations. If it is you're not comfortable about being in certain situations, don't you don't have to put yourself and they leave. Mm -hmm. so and the thing I would recommend, huh? No, I, I just want to add there. Yes. There are some things that is that is cryptic advices, that spiritual prophecy advises, that counselors will advise, common sense will advise, that if you are in a relationship. And, and take this in the context. Live in that relationship with the understanding that a breakup is possible. So what you do in that relationship, you must be able to leave without having some of those challenges. Because you see, based on what you do in that relationship, what Nadine is advising there could become a whole lot more difficult because of what took place in the relationship. Right. So you have to be very careful what you do inside of there. You know, there are some people, you're so sure you're going to get married. Well, we're not just talking about, about um, sexual encounters. That, that is one thing. But you also have people who, who um, open bank accounts together. And there are some buy people who, who buy property together and all kinds of things because it, careful with those things because it, you could complicate that relationship to the extent that moving away becomes very difficult. And even if there's a breakup, it becomes really, really traumatic and difficult for you to leave it alone. Yes. You know, I want to highlight something that you all said here, just in the, you all said earlier, um, under this point as well, because sometimes I remember, I think it was you, Gideon, who said, don't go sharing about the relationship to third parties. And I think that should also yeah. apply to a new partner. Because sometimes you could tell your new partner, that was my girlfriend, and she was so and so and so, or that was my boyfriend. Oh, Lord, he's a real, you know, he, he real this and real that. You understand? So now your new partner develops animosity towards your old partner. So I think it, that whole aspect of, you know, making sure that you're, you're, if you have nothing good to say, you don't say anything at all. That you yeah. try to, Gideon, I think you mentioned about doing the affirmation exercise. And then yeah. there is now the new, the entrance of the new partner. I think we need to give advice to the new partner as well. Because sometimes the new partner uh, may not be as pretty or as shapely or as well known as the old partner. And so they feel insecure. And so they don't like the, the, the old partner. You know, so all those are some of the dynamics um, you want to make a one statement on that, any of you? On, on the new, the well, attitude of the new partner, not just the old partner to the new partner, well, but the new partner to the old partner. My, my, well, my guidance will be basically the same for anybody. You don't get into a relationship if you are not confident in yourself. Right. Right? 
Um, so you should, if you're getting into a relationship, know who you are, accept who you are, so that regardless to who the, your partner would have had experience with, it does not threaten you at all, right? So that, so that um, and, and that goes for any relationship, really and truly. Mm -hmm. but, but understand that if you, if you are getting into a relationship with somebody who had an ex-relationship, that, that there will be some paths that will be crossed at some point or the other. Mm -hmm. Paths will cross and yeah. you have to be prepared for that. Right, and, yeah. and I, I think, um, um, you know, as you said, paths would cross and you just have to deal with it. I, I, I would personally think though that the, the new partner doesn't have any obligation to go and try to be friends right. with <laughs> the old partner to make peace. Like I am, yeah, let me not put myself in it, but you're not under any obligation to go and run an investigation. You just you just appear on the scene and you're trying to you dating and you're trying to get to know this person and they might have some I for history. want to have a better word baggage or not yeah. not baggage history. History is a better way to say it. history <laughs> with this other individual. And um, you know, if it is you understand or you've heard about it, you could be mature and respectful of what you know, mature about what was, and you know, don't have to go and pick. Um, to try and look for a confrontation or something else with somebody you don't know about things that you weren't there for or whatever. Right. It is. So, you know, so you you come in and you, you know, you just, I, so I think, you know, you just have to be, you know, because as, as Gideon would have already said, I don't have to go and repeat it, you know, know yourself, know what you bring to the table, what you have to offer. And if at any point in time is being questioned or anything like that, you know, you know, take what you have somewhere else. You know, I, I personally, I, 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 you know, don't ever put yourself in a position where somebody wants to, you know, there are some people who enjoy that, having people fight over them or <laughs> people against mm -hmm. each other and they're in the middle and you, you're talking to this one tonight and you're talking to that one in the morning and, and the both of them, both of them, you know, talking about one another and whatever. And this person in the middle is like, I don't know where she problem. I don't know what, to, huh? No. Don't. Why? ever allow yourself to be an option if it is that person if you're getting any vague vibes or you are not sure and sure and you're not sure where that is concerned you know i i will say take your goods elsewhere i remember i remember in a family life <laughs> program for singles needing um i yeah. can't remember if it was um pastor Tenalio who said it um but he said um don't allow yourself to be an option when you can be the main choice of course that definitely yes. i'm a child yeah. of the king you know what? Right. What? No, ever let anybody. Don't give anybody any discounts. No. no. All right. Now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. So as, for this. <laughs> as we wrap up, guys, um, I mean, thank you so very much. We know that when we're dealing with relationships, um, we could go on and on, and there will be an infinite number of questions. I think somebody who asked um, how attached should the unmarried Christian couple be for a breakup to affect them that much? I'm, I'm wondering if that's a rhetoric question because we really can't measure love. Eh? <laughs> I mean. Uh, whether attachment, whether you think they're deeply attached, or you think, well, they shouldn't be so made, so attached because they're un unmarried. But remember, when you you're unmarried, you're preparing for your know, there's an expectation of. I think Idia mentioned it earlier of marriage. And then there are also so many factors affect um, that affect attachment apart from just just um sex or premarital sex, as the case may be. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many things. Just might be somebody's level of maturity. Then you have this thing called trauma bonds. Um, as to, you know, as a whole other thing, you know, to, uh, as to how, you know, people get attached and how close they feel. And, you know, and then there's some people who are a lot more empathetic or, uh, empathetic or their emotions run a particular way and may feel so attached and a particular breakup might devastate them. Or you feed a need, them. Nadine. If you feed a need in the person, right, you know, some sort of so what might devastate them. one person, one person might shake off, might cry twice or might turn around and say, well, good luck, good, well, tough luck for them next and they move on but somebody else might be devastated and cry need some ice cream and chocolate and whatnot you know it it, it, it varies i think right. it varies you know but All there right. are certain things that would you know definitely make the attachment a little bit more difficult but more difficult i i think so i, I share that view as well gideon i'll throw this one out to you before we uh deal with our final question because i'm getting mm -hmm. the, the it's time for wrap up for wrapping up here um 
is there a ta- an instance when you would advise unmarried couples to work through it as opposed to ending it? No, I think this is kind of going off on a tangent. So let's just make it a, a two sentence response um, <laughs> because we've had several programs on maintaining healthy relationships wow. and what to do if your relationship faces some troubles. So I'll probably need to just go and go on the um the web uh, the web link. <laughs> Our YouTube link, yeah, and, and send them the link for this program. But um, just in a quick, quick, quick response. Yeah, well, the, where they the, should the work. question to that is yes. Um, in fact, in every relationship, there'll be a time you have to work through some things. There will be challenges, and that's part of the whole growth process. But there are some mm-hmm. principles that we, we spoke about that you would have to be aware of to know that this is not something that, that you work through or um, you have worked through this enough times to know that it's not going to work out. It's not changing. Yeah. Right. And I think, Nadine, I think you had mentioned as well that it's sometimes it's necessary to seek help and you would, you could also get counsel yeah. on, okay, this is yeah, something that definitely. could be addressed if X, Y, Z is definitely. done. But yeah. if not, if you're not seeing that um, behavior modification, then it's probably not something that you want to work out. Yeah. All right, so that was um, Simply Natural Bells. I'm sorry, we'll have to probably send you the link, um, Simply Natural Bells, will, um, for, for the program where we dealt with maintaining healthy relationships, but just to make sure that we respond to um, as many questions as we can. And finally, guys, we have some friends who taught. I remember once when one of my girlfriends broke up with her boyfriend, she was just like, I want to go and egg his car. And I was like, yes, I will drive you. <laughs> that was in my youth. <laughs> <laughs> we have friends who taught. I mean, I be drinking bush tea for people fever. It was such an unpleasant breakup. I felt it was justified. <laughs> so, what advice can you offer to third parties who have also been affected by a breakup? You know, the friends, the family, the church. Because people, as, as Gideon said, our relationship might be um, private, but it's definitely not a secret. Huh? It, it, there are third parties who are impacted upon, who also have hopes and dreams. And now we have to add, I suppose, social media to that with the amount of pictures people post of their relationship mm-hmm. that social media thinks they're, they're a part of the relationship as well. <laughs> All right. So what, what tips can we give um, to third parties in dealing with a breakup? Well, well, some of it has to do with what is circumstance of the breakup in terms of... Mm-hmm. Now, unfortunately, we have some relationships that break up, but the breakup occurs after... The young lady may have had a child. Um, you, you, have a, you have a lot of things that happen, right? And how you treat with that, therefore, has to do with what is this, the, the circumstance. Now, if, if unfortunately, my girlfriend would have had a, a bare child for me during our relationship, but we didn't get married, that is almost an inseparable right. union, right? Mm-hmm. So any any young man that comes into the life of that lady after have to deal with me too. Right. Because I am the father of the child that, that, is, that is there. Yeah. Right? Um, so so that is an extreme case. But I, I'm just saying there are cases in which there are there is history and, and the history to a large degree, degree will determine how um, how something will, how, how how third parties will respond and how they ought to respond. All I can say is the scripture asks us to treat each other with brotherly love, oh, right? And, and and therefore, regardless of what may or may not have happened, parties need to understand that. We, we, we need to love each other more than we dislike what the, the, um, the circumstance may have been. So as, as, as Adventists will normally say, love the sinner, hate the sin. So you, you have to understand that these are people and these are children of God and therefore how I treat with them, regardless of what party I am, whether I am the first person or I am the third party, that the essence of this whole thing is about respecting and, and recognizing that these are people that God would have died for. And yes. it is his desire that they to experience salvation. So I'm saying this from a Christian perspective. Um, this is how you treat with third party, right? But, but with respect, understanding where we, we spoke about boundaries and so on. So understand what the boundaries are. 
set up those boundaries, live within those boundaries, but, but all of that has to be done with an understanding of love for. First Corinthians 13. Amen, amen, amen. Sister Nadine? Um, yeah, well, with regards to that, I, you know, what comes to mind is, you know, you know, love that whole principle about love your enemies, do good to them. Um, and also, Rene, I have been there. You know, you talked about egging. I, you know, you know, you you want to ride for your friend, uh, and or you 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 you're toting. Yeah. However, as you know, as go, you know, as and you know, as life continues, and you know, we are continually we challenge in our relationships and in our relationship with God. We are challenged to sometimes dig deep and ask God, ask the Holy Ghost for help to be yeah. able to who God has called us to be. Yeah. And it would call for us to deny ourselves and the from the satisfaction, the gratification that tearing somebody to shreds um, verbally would give you. But to understand that that individual is a child of the king. Yeah. And that person is still the apple of God's eye. Right. And when God says no weapon from against me shall prosper, and I believe that go, I do not want to form myself as a weapon against anybody else who's a child of God either. All right. So, so we have to be to keep in mind that even while you know, as third party, sometimes you you, you know you want to ride, you want to hold, and you know that's part of the emotion and whatnot. But sometimes we, we have to, you know, this this like sounds I want to live above the world. We have right. to you know live above that, and sometimes that would involve you didn't have that follow up with them or whatever. You still greet them, still wish them well, and you know, time young folks. Um, you know, Jenny, I don't know about you, but I have some years I have added up over, the, over time. And, you know, I've, you've seen some things, you've, you've seen where, you know, you know, what was like 15 years ago, a big drama and somebody, you know, and nobody want to talk at this one or whatever. You don't know who that person has, who's going to be his wife later on. You don't ever know. True. You don't know. Yeah. You know, after all of that, and but the bottom line would be that, you know, that for third, for third parties who are involved, you provide support, you provide encouragement. If there's an abusive situation, you get in there by the grace of God with wisdom and 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 the guidance of God, and you try to 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 help support where that is concerned for sure. Yeah. But as third parties and so on, you want to be able to measure so how involved you want to get into that and the kind of support right. you're going to give. So are you going to tell us, let me go, let me go and egg them? Thank God for Jesus, ready. <laughs> let's go egg a cow, or let us go. Or let oh don't worry about it. I will I will wait for her. I know she should for my church and whatever, whatever. I will and oh are you gonna encourage them in that or are you gonna be like, listen, you know what? Yeah, you know, you know, let's see how we can move on from that. You know what? Actually, grace, to, you, you know, we, we we spoke about this enough. Let's let's look at some, let's talk about something else. Let's divert our attention and energies elsewhere for some other area to go. Let's go and try, let's go and volunteer here. Let's go. You know, as a third party, you want to be a positive influence. You want to be able to support, encourage, and try to help that person out of it rather than, you know, you know, being a part of, of, of stirring, continuing. Stirring up strife. That's and becoming a weapon against somebody. Mm -hmm. Correct. That's right. <laughs> you know, and I, I want to add, um, it's probably sometimes important that the parties as well be careful of what they share because I've seen instances where the, the parties are able to work through as, as simply natural bell acts. Yes. They're able to work through the issue and reconcile, but third parties remain so unforgiving. Why are you going back? They are she? Stuck. Look what she do here. They yes, stuck. they're stuck. That's correct. So while you know? move on, while you move on and you are, you actually make peace with the individual, you are work forward and you work out your issues, but your crew still stuck and they still <laughs> want to chapel mix stone. Yes, correct is right. right. So, as you say, we want to make sure that you don't become a weapon against anybody. And as Gideon said, we want to treat each other with brotherly love. I think that's a beautiful way to wrap up our discussions, um, guys. It's been pretty extensive. Um, we trust that we've been able to explore all aspects of the topic. Thank you so very much for your questions as well. I want to express thanks to Elder Gideon St. Bryce and Dr. Nadine Isaac Dennis for accepting our invitation to be on AY Online tonight to share um, of their wisdom and their expertise with us on the issues of relationship rejection 
and reconciliation. Thank you all so very much. I'm very, very happy with what we have shared tonight. And I trust that we all would benefit from it. So be, feel free to send this link out, everyone, <laughs> to persons who you know need to get this information. Thank you, Ellis and Bryce. Thank you, Dr. Isaac welcome. Dennis. And thank you to Robert, You're who's welcome. behind the scenes with our technical aspects. So this brings us to the end of AY Online for 2020. The next time we see you guys, it will be in the new year, 2021. I pray that God continues to bless us and to keep us and to really protect us and preserve us until that time. And I want to leave you with this Bible promise. And it says, Psalm 34, 18, that says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. So if, you, if you're the person who has been rejected, remember that God is near to you when you have a broken heart. And if you are the person who has done the rejecting, then remember that God loves those who have a contrite and humble spirit. All right? So this speaks to either party. And we want to encourage you this evening to continue to fear God and to give him glory and to let your light so shine before men. Until we meet again, that's next year, January 2021, where our topic will be the big boss, or the big bang all right we're going to help our young people respond to questions and evolution and all these conspiracy theories that are circulating around the vaccine and <laughs> with the covid19 pandemic etc we're going to be touching on some of that the big boss or the big bang next year january 2021 we look forward to having you i want to invite elder gideon to say a word of prayer for us as we close off and we want to wish you a very happy sabbath wherever you're worshiping tomorrow be blessed in the presence of the Lord. Hail the Gideon. Ciao. Let's pray. Oh, Father, we thank you so much for what you would have done tonight through this AY Online segment. Uh, we want to thank you most of all for the example that you would have set for us as to uh, how you would have conducted relationships once you walked on earth, even in your Godship, the way that you relate to us and so we pray, God, that through your Holy Spirit that you continue to enlighten us so that as we occupy till you come, we would establish relationships here, significant ones, um, casual ones. But we want all of those to be based on your instructions and your guidance and to meet your approval. So continue to teach us, continue to lead us. And may all that we do, including our relationships, meet your divine approval. And may your kingdom be established through whatever we do, so that indeed you will be lifted up, so you can draw others unto yourself. Mm -hmm. we, we praise you, and we thank you for doing this. And as we go through the rest of this Sabbath, may it do for us what you have designed it to do. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, everyone. See you next year. Pass it on, pass it on, the light from Jesus, pass it on, for what is your mission, but to witness to the world, so equip yourself with his word.